This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome into God's house here on the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Pastor Andrew will be leading us in the sermon theme of You Are a Child of the Light, coming out of the epistle reading from Ephesians chapter 5. Our divine service is divine service setting 4, page 203. If you're following along in your hymnals, we also have the psalm, which is Psalm 34, verses 12 through 22. And then also today, as you'll note there on our Cradle to Grave banner over here, today is the day that we do mark those that are receiving Bibles and catechisms, our third graders and our fifth graders in both of our services here today. And so we will do that with God's blessing as well. I invite you to please rise, greet one another in the name of the Lord. Would you please be seated for our opening hymn? Please rise. In remembrance of your baptism, you are invited to make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, 
and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We join in the psalm, Psalm 34, 12 to 22.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the twelfth Sunday after Pentecost is from Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 5. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit." addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In honor of this time in the life of Christ, we rise to the reading of the Holy Gospel, preceded by the Alleluia and verse.
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We join in confessing our common Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn, and I'll come through the aisle to collect any prayer cards that there may be.
You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It all began in the beginning. When God spoke and it was made. He said, let there be light. And it was so. He made the waters and all that was in them. He separated the waters from the dry ground and made the trees to bear fruits, each according to their kind. And God saw all that he had made at that point in time, and it was good. And that was only day three. On the fourth day, he looked and he said, Let there be lights to cover the expanse of the heavens and separate the day from the night. The greater light, the sun, to rule over the day, and the lesser light, the stars and the moon, to rule over the night. And he set the sun, moon, and stars in the expanse of the heavens and separated the light and the darkness. And God saw all that he had made, and it was good. It was good. And he continued his work of creation, creating the living creatures, the birds of the air that flap, sing, and squawk, the beasts of the ground that howl, growl, and bellow, the fish of the sea, the sea creatures that swim swiftly from side to side. And the creepy things that, you know, creep along the ground, the ants, bugs, bees, and so on. And he made each of these according to their kind, and God saw all that he had made, and it was good. Well, last of all, he made man, the crown of his creation. He made man to have dominion, to be fruitful, increase in number, and fill the earth. And when he looked out, he saw all that he had made, and it was very good. Well, we all know that didn't last long. It only lasted about two chapters. So, in the fall, see in Genesis chapter 3, in the fall and the sin, it seems like all of it, the entirety of creation turned in on itself. No longer were the animals living peacefully with one another, but rather they were, or they had the look, of fear and blood in their eyes. The light and the darkness that's, that were set forth to separate the days, the nights, and all of the seasons, and once promised security, well, now we can see that it's not that way anymore. The world fell into darkness, and we can become more and more aware of that every day. The effects of the fall, sin, death, and all the pain that comes with those two very real and present aspects of our lives are the result of the fall. And the effects of sin, our sin, darkened world, can be clearly seen throughout the world. And often we feel and experience these things in the tragedies of life. The death of a loved one. The trappings of a seemingly endless disease. Maybe the difficulties among family members. Yeah, we feel these effects of the fall, the darkness of sin, both near and far. And Paul even tells us in our epistle reading that at one time we were a part of that. At one time, you were darkness. Not just that you lived in darkness, but that you were darkness. But he doesn't stop there. He says, but now, but now, you are light in the Lord. Now you are light in the Lord. Because at the right time and the right place, the same word that spoke the entire creation into existence. That word, Jesus, the light of the world became flesh and dove deep into the dark, dreary dominion, did some wondrous deeds, but eventually was dragged 
to die. And he, being denied any sort of just trial, died deserted in complete darkness. It's a good Friday. It was a dark day indeed. Jesus, the light of the world, went to the cross, and it seems that as he hung there, the sun, as, as it had been set in place to rise and set, went dark. And he died for you, for me, and for all of us. And as he was taken down from the cross, he was laid in the dark depth of the tomb, and the stone was rolled shut. Well, we know that's really not where the story ends. Three days later, as we see, just as it had been set in place, the sun rose again, and with it the Son of God. The Son of God, the light of the world, rose from the dead, solidifying the victory over de the devil, the darkness of sin the sin-filled world, and even death itself. Jesus stood bright and shining in all of his resurrected glory as he defeated the darkest thing that each and every one of us have to face. Death. See, Jesus died so that you don't have to. And Jesus lives so that you get to. And Paul in his letter to the Ephesians for this morning says, you are now, because of that, you are now light in the Lord. And to walk as children of light, he encourages us. And as we know, light and darkness are really very real, really present realities of our everyday lives. We, we see that every morning the sun rises and we get up for a new day to live, work, and play all around the confines, confines of this light. And every evening the sun sets and the darkness encloses all of creation and we rest waiting for tomorrow. Maybe when we walk into a room, we flip the lights on to see where we're going and as we leave that same room, we turn them off. Well, mainly to save energy because we're German. Um, but we experience light and darkness around us every day. And we experience them more than just physically. See, both light and darkness comes to us in different ways than just sunrise, sunset, lights on and lights off. And often as we look out at the world, we find that it's really difficult to walk as children of light. As Paul calls us to in our epistle reading for today. I mean, really look out at the world today. We can see in our own communities, in the surrounding country, in the world around us, the darkness is still churning as if it is still very active. Look at the news. Look at the... Read through the, the news websites. Read through social media. We see all of the injustices, the greed, the jealousy, the anger, murder after murder after murder, hatred after hatred after hatred, and the list really could go on and on and on. Much like it did when Paul wrote his letter. See, Paul writes and calls us to take no part in these things, but rather, rather to expose them for what they are, for darkness. And really often that's a hard thing to do because we, at the same time we love the light and hate the light. We, we love the light because when you turn on a light in a dark room, often you don't hit your foot on a chair that was a little bit farther out from the table that you didn't really expect. Or maybe when you're in your children's room and you turn on a light, you don't step on that Lego landmine and yell out in pain and so forth. In instances like that, we love and cherish and find comfort in the light. I mean, how many times when you were younger did you shut the lights off in the basement and shoot up the stairs as fast as you could just to run away from whatever, you could poss whatever possibly could be grabbing you at that point? Or how many times when you're home alone do you turn all of the lights on to reveal anything 
and give comfort that knowing that everything is out in the open. We, we love the light because it uncovers and it brings us comfort. But in that same vein, it's partially the reason we don't like the light at all. We hate the light because it uncovers and it convicts. We hate the light because often it acts like a spotlight of our, on our very lives, especially when we're caught in our own sin. We hate it because often we've grown callous and comfortable with the darkness of our own hearts and the deeds that we've, we've been doing, that when the light of Christ in and through his word shines on us, often we do whatever we can to throw something over it and cover it up. Maybe there's something in your life that's going on right now that you feel that way as well. Well, Paul calls us in his epistle reading to live as children of light and to walk as a child of the light. He calls us to pay attention how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time that you have because the days are evil. Well, how do we do this? Well, if we remember last week in our reading from Ephesians, he gives us this long list, and elsewhere in Paul's epistles, he gives us lists of things we can do so that we can walk as children of light. He says, speak the truth to your neighbor. If you're angry, do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Do honest work. Be sexually pure. Speak in a way that is profitable towards your neighbor and only useful for building one another up. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as, in, just as God in Christ forgave you. And today he says, walk in all that is good and right and true. And the, the list really could go on and on and on. Well, how do we see that here? Well, we see it in the big things, in our service towards our community, our service towards those afar in other countries. And we also see it in all things. When you come alongside someone who's hurting, who's sorrowful, who's going through so much pain, praying with them, bringing them the light of Christ and shining that into their lives in all of his resurrected glory. See, it's in these things that we, we walk as a child of a light. And we show others the love and the power of Christ in the light of his resurrection. And as we are filled with that, that light, as we've been filled with it through the waters of our baptism, as his spirit has been poured out on us, we can join together throughout life, singing songs, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making a melody in your, in your hearts to the Lord. So how about we try that? We try that right now. Let's join together. Now I'm going to sing a song that we're all going to be really familiar with, and I invite you to join with me. It's a beautiful song, and it goes like this. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, Walk as children of light in Christ's resurrection. Amen. And may the peace of God which transcends all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ. Amen. Let us rise to join in prayer. Father, we thank you that you have sent the great good shepherd who has compassion on his flock. In his name we lift up our prayers for the family of God, for every nation, tribe, people, and language. 
for all those who hunger for the true bread of life. Lord, in your mercy, grant us always, O God, to work for the food that endures to eternal life. Bless the ministry of this congregation in our community, that many may embrace Jesus as the Christ and believe that he is the true bread of God who has come from heaven. Grant that we would never hunger or thirst for anything but Christ and his righteousness. Be with our entire team ministry of pastors, administrator, faculty, staff, and volunteers. Guide us in our service within the congregation and community. Be also with Vicar Peters, Vicar Cranky, and seminarian Mark Esser as they continue preparing for the office of the Holy Ministry. We also thank and praise you for the safe travels for Pastor May and his family as they are here with us today, and also for Dwayne Smith having safe travels home as well. Continue to prosper the work of Lutherans in Africa and bless our continued partnership in the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, grant true unity in place of disunity, harmony in place of disharmony, and peace in place of violence, that the spread of your gospel may continue unhindered and the spirit of love abound. Lord, in your mercy, Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the birth of Cameron John, born to Brady and Jamie Lipke. Bless that this child and his mother are granted the needed rest and a blessed transition home after childbirth and that Cameron will be brought to the waters of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy, protect your people, O Lord, from the impurities of this world. Save us from the violence outside ourselves and from hardness of heart within. By your righteous governance, preserve and guide the leaders of our nation as they execute justice in our land. By your Holy Spirit, change hardened hearts with the gospel that true peace may be established. Lord, in your mercy, bestow your power of healing upon the sick, especially those who are suffering with COVID. For Joanne Hartwig, Karen Unglaub, Al Eggers, Laura Goodsko, that in accordance with your will, they may give thanks to your name. Give your spirit of hope to the depressed, the lonely, and those who mourn the death of loved ones. Strengthen their faith and assure them of your presence in all circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, you continually feed your people, Lord God, not with what we want, but with what we need. You give us bread and meat to nourish our bodies. You also feed our souls with the very body and blood of our Savior, the true manna from heaven. Give us gratitude for your inestimable gifts and turn away all of our grumbling. Lord, in your mercy, within the fold of your tender care, O Father, we entrust these petitions to you that you might hear us, teach us your word, and feed us with the bread of life, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we go before our Lord with our offerings and tithes. I invite you to fill out that fellowship pad on the inside portion of the pew, filling out one name per line, being sure to put today's date at the top. Today is August 15th. We receive our gifts.
So at this time, then I'd like to call forward Jessica Borsma from our Family Ministry Board as she will be assisting with giving of the Bibles and the catechisms here today as you will mark on the milestone uh, banner over here that in the third grade we give Bibles to our uh, kids of our congregation and then in the fifth grade catechisms as well to mark those milestones in the faith. So I'd like to invite forward all third graders uh, as well as fifth graders and parents to please come forward at this time. I invite you to hear the word of God from the book of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And so, just as you heard in the sermon for today, in a world full of darkness, the word of God is your light of truth, pointing you to Jesus as your Savior as it says in the 119th Psalm, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And those who are receiving catechisms here today, we see that as the lens at which we look at all of Scripture and all of life. And so we rejoice in the partnership that we have with parents and passing on the faith. And so we turn to Proverbs chapter 22 that says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it, And it says, it says in the catechism, as the head of the family should teach it in a simple way to his household. That's what the catechism is all about. It's a devotional tool to be used within the household to teach those six chief parts so that as a family, all may learn the truths of God's word. So I am going to invite you one at a time with your parents. Come up here and I am going to invite you to receive the baptismal blessing that you received at your baptism as your parents place their hands upon your shoulders as they join as well in that blessing. So first up, Carter Hart. You are receiving a Bible today here. Go ahead. Plenty of room up here. So, all right. Carter, receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptismal faith to life everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. There you are. Next up, Charles Nominson. Charles, I really don't want to mess up your hair because I know how important those spikes are. Yes. All right. But I'm going to do so anyway. All right. Charles, the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal faith to life everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Hilary Vogapol. Also receiving a Bible here today, Hillary, the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal faith to life everlasting in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Next up here, we are going to have Mr. Haft, Landon, receiving a catechism here today. Landon, the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal faith to life everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you are. Layla. Layla, the Lord bless and keep you in your baptismal faith to life everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you are. All right. Let us all join in prayer together. Dear Lord God, <clears throat> excuse me. Dear Lord God, may you keep these children in the truth of your word all their days. 
Keep them from the temptations of the evil one and guide them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Give wisdom and confidence to the parents of these children that as they live out their own faith, they would be courageous and bold to serve you, to pass on the Christian faith to their children in all that they say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. And I invite you to then hear the blessing. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and protect you all your days. Peace be with you. Amen. It's a joy to journey with you in the faith. I'll invite you to head back to your seats now. Thank you, Jessica. We hear from St. Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians, whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. The word of the Lord. And so taking to heart these words of God, if you have not been instructed in the Lutheran faith or you doubt the presence of the Lord in this meal, it's out of love that we would invite you to refrain from receiving the Lord's Supper and speak to a pastor after the service if you have any questions. However, if you'd like to come forward and receive a blessing during the sacrament, simply place your arms across your chest so that we know that you would like to receive the blessing. We continue with the service of the sacrament. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death, will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. 
This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. Now may this true body and this true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and protect you in both body and soul to life everlasting. Depart with peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We join in singing the Nunc Dimittis. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Please be seated. Greetings to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Special greeting to the May family here as they are here with us all the way from Kenya. They win the award for traveling the farthest and also an award for staying awake through the service because what time did you get in yesterday? And it's nine hours different. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys are jet lagged and it is amazing to have you here. So, a few announcements before we depart today. Uh, volunteers needed for Sunday school. We're still looking for two for this. Uh, we're still looking for teachers for the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade class. A high school teacher, co-coordinator, and a music coordinator. Um, and so we'd love to be able to have some help uh, getting close here. Talk to Jessica, myself, or Pastor Andrew. We will get you set up. PowerPoint and live stream operators are also needed. Please contact Ashley in the office. We will get you all set up for that. You can do it. It is, it, you can do the PowerPoint and live stream operating. I have no doubt, all right? You may think that technology is difficult, and that's me. You can do this, all right? Also, um, one thing you'll notice is the Coins for Christ. So the Coins for Christ is coins that are placed in the offering plate that go towards seminarian. That has been switched now to Mark Esser as he begins his seminary training here starting up. Well, technically he's already started, but he starts here fall classes very soon. So just coins that go into the offering plate, that goes now to Mark Esser. Also, free webinar uh, that is on critical race theory and the sanctity of life, which is about every other uh, article in your news feed these days. Um, is being done by Reverend Dr. Lucas Woodford on August 17th. So this Tuesday, 7 p.m., registration is open. There's a website that you can go into. You do need to register to watch that webinar, okay? So that's Tuesday evening here this week. Job openings at the school, still in need of a uh, kitchen assistant, and now we are needed of Title I teacher and substitute teachers. Uh, so if you are able to help, please contact Josh Bauman there in the office. And then uh, as catechesis begins here uh, very soon, our intro to catechesis meetings are today at 1145 in the church basement. Or if you're not able to attend today, we have the second offering at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. I believe that is it for today. So I invite you to go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.